wanted to be on a pedestal, and who knew it would be over a sewage tank? You know, it, 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 it. actually, there's probably something metaphorical about that. Well, we're going to declare at 11 o'clock, even though it's not quite. My name is Ed Clark, and I am the president of the Wildlife Center of Virginia. And a lot of you know the Wildlife Center, but I, I really am so thrilled that more than half of the crowd are first-timers and folks who don't know us. The Wildlife Center of Virginia is the largest hospital for wildlife medicine in the United States, one of the largest in the world, and we are the preeminent facility for caring for animals like young bald eagles. We have facilities specifically designed to raise these birds, enable them to develop both their physical stature and their flight skills and the knowledge they need to eat natural foods and to bring them back to the wild. Now today we've got three eagles we're going to be re releasing and uh, we are going to do our best to get them out of here in an orderly fashion. Now what I'm going to do with each bird, just so everybody uh, will, will understand, is we, we have all three birds in the van right there. We're going to bring them out one at a time. Now once I bring them out, I've got to hold them for several minutes and I will walk around with them. They, we, and now this is not just to show them off. The birds are uh, needing to adjust their eyes to the sunlight. They've been in covered crates for the last 18 hours or so. And so they, they really do need to get out and let their eyes adjust. That vulture is going to leave. That's an immature black vulture flying there. Uh, when these eagles start coming out, he'll, he'll bug out. But, uh, he, well, either that or he may become the entree. One never knows. But uh, I've eaten crow before a lot of times. But uh, the, the fact is that each of these birds is a young bird. They don't have white heads and white tails. So a lot of folks will be surprised by that until you remember that only birds that are four and a half years old are mature birds. So these are all immature birds. Now, before we go any further at all, I want to acknowledge and thank the uh, Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge and let's see, where are the staff? We've got biologists, we've got the refuge manager, we've got the PR people, law enforcement here helping. And I won't even try to call everybody's name, but please, when you see these folks in these brown shirts with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service emblem on them, Two reasons to thank them. They take care of this incredible refuge and it is a true sanctuary for wildlife and the, the degree to which this refuge has played an important role in the industry. On a more immediate note, these birds came from the campground right down the road and indeed the chief biologist, one of the law enforcement officers here, went over to the campground, privately owned campground, and rescued these birds, made arrangements to get them down to us. Now, let's see, where's Wanda? I've got son of mine, here she is here. <laughs> campground owner and the uh, person who made the call, but also a member, you wanna come up and say hi to everybody? Come on up here. Uh, and also a member of the Axe Axe County Board of Supervisors. Please, I'll bring this it was a wonderful day today, it really is. Um, we raised, or we didn't, the eagles raised at our campground for many years now. They always nest in the same place, but they normally only raise one. And they nested in a, two trees that were like this. And I guess they were weakened during the storm, and one day they, the trees just fell yeah. and threw the eaglets out on the ground. And, um, my husband and I called over here and I got a hold of Kevin. And so if someone has to come and get these birds, we're afraid predators will get them. Um, they were good size, but they couldn't fly. And uh, so Fish and Wildlife come to the rescue and they got them and, and uh, rehabilitated them to be able to come here today. And we're just thankful that we were able to rescue them. Like I said, we've been, they've been hatching in our campground for many, many years, but usually only one. So this year we had two. Thank you. you. Want to say anything on behalf of the refuge? Now that I put you on the spot, you've got to. <laughs> I 
refuge manager. Yay! Yay. Well, and, uh, thank everybody for coming out and all the hard work that Ed Clark and, and the, the Wildlife Center has done to really uh, take care of this national treasure for our bald eagles. And, uh, and we're very excited about this opportunity to release these local birds here uh, on the refuge. And, you know, they will you'll be able to see them around the area occasionally. So we're very excited about this opportunity and glad you all could come out to, to witness this great recovery. So thank you. Okay, this is Suzanne Baird, the uh, refuge manager. Now, it's time to get down to the getting down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've, got, we've got three birds here. All three of them currently have tracking transmitters on them. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. But what we found yesterday afternoon as we were on the way here and they were monitoring the signals that one of them's broken. And so, I mean, it just it is what it is. It, technology stuff breaks. But what we're going to do, and we don't know at least I don't know in what order they're packed in the van. So when we get to the bird that has the faulty transmitter, it'll take us an extra minute or, or so, and probably not much more than that. We've got to cut that transmitter off the bird so that he's just not burdened with that worthless piece of technology and we can send it back and get it fixed. But uh, that will also give us the opportunity to let you see these little tracking devices. Now a little bit about bald eagles and why we're paying attention and tracking them. Uh, these birds, being very, very young birds, are just starting out to do eagle stuff. And most of what they do, whether they're hatched in a nest or raised in captivity, is driven by instinct. They're not, frankly, learning very much from their parents. Bald eagles catch fish and it's hardwired into their genes to do that. But they are also scavengers and as such, that's one of the issues, positive and negative, that helps these birds survive. They don't have to be the world's fastest ki fish catcher to catch a dead fish. Uh, another reason that bald eagles are able to survive, and one of the reasons Benjamin Franklin didn't really want them as our national symbol, they steal stuff. <laughs> they steal fish from other eagles, they steal fish from ospreys, they steal fish from anybody they can steal fish from, and that vulture will find, if he finds food, and goes down to eat it, the eagle will zero right in and go down, chase the vultures away, and have a meal. Oh. Okay, they've got character flaws, and haven't we all? <laughs> well, except me. <laughs> uh, watch out, my nose might be growing here on that one. But the tracking collar, or not collar, uh, tracking harness that's on, it's a little uh, thing about the size of a pack of cards, and it sits right on the flat of their back right between their shoulder blades and it's strapped on with a little cross your heart harness that is made of a Teflon ribbon, very, very tough. It does not fall off the bird and it will remain on that bird for its life and it will not bother the bird at all. They've been on, these birds have had them on for months now and so they, they've completely ignored them, no problem. But every 48 hours, this is not a satellite tracker that beams up to a satellite in space because that costs $2,500 a month for satellite time. <laughs> These guys call home, like ET. Yeah. It's cell phone technology. So every 48 hours, that little device makes a cellular call and does an electronic burst of information. It's collecting information every 15 minutes. The exact longitude and latitude of where the bird is, its exact altitude, and if it's moving, how fast? and several other things that, that are downloaded. And once we get these uh, birds out, you'll be able to go to our website, wildlifecenter.org, and just go to the map, and you'll be able to follow these birds. Now, the, the good news is if one of these birds does get in trouble and that signal does not move, we'll be able to go right to it. And, of course, we, it won't be us. It'll be the biologists from the Department of Game and Inland, Inland Fisheries, typically. But we'll be able to recover that bird immediately if, uh, if there is a problem. So that's where we are. Now, before we get started, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the Wildlife Center in between, but uh, do we have any questions before we get started? Yes? How long does the battery last on the pack? 
How long does the battery last on the pack? Excellent question. I wish I'd remembered to say that. Yeah. The battery itself actually only lasts a few days, but the whole back of the transmitter is a solar panel. So like the whole back of my head, it keeps us charged up. <laughs> but it, it will, as long as the bird is sitting uh, where there's direct or indirect sunlight, the bird we've got out there now wearing the last one that we put on has been out three years and it's still going strong. And they're, we, they're guaranteed for two years, but so far this bird that uh, we have, that we're tracking now, has been out over three years and there's no sign that this transmitter is failing in the least. So we, we're, we're hoping for two good years of data and looking forward to three. Now why are we collecting the data? Lots of reasons. We want to know the movement of the birds in order to protect the birds. There are lots and lots of proposals for things like wind energy development. And those things get sighting decisions made based on lots of factors. And if somebody wants to put a big wind energy generator in an area that is a frequent eagle highway, we may have something to say about that. Because those things act like great big blenders when birds fly into them and it's not a pretty sight. So these birds are not only going back to be eagles, which is important in their own right, they're actually contributing to the base of knowledge that helps us protect not only these two birds, but their entire species and most likely this entire refuge. All right, now let's see, I, there's something else I just thought, oh, but when I get the birds out, just so you'll know what I'm gonna do and, and you won't be elbowing any little kids. Well, I mean, if they're not behaving, go ahead, but. Uh, <laughs> When I get the bird out, they will have been in these crates since about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, basically in the dark. If you know what it's like, the inside the house and walk out into the bright snow, boom, your eyes just are overwhelmed. I need to hold them for several minutes before I can release them, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to walk along the edge of the line so that you can get pictures. So, uh, and if, if you will be courteous, particularly to the vertically challenged members of the audience or the kids, let them come up front and sit down. And if you get uh, pictures of, of one of the birds or two of the birds, let somebody else come in and get a close picture. But, but be polite, we've got time, we're not punching any clocks here. Okay, uh, now, one other thing, because I don't know the order in which they're put in, and before everybody starts going, oh, what's wrong with that bird? One of these birds, which happens to be a great big female, doesn't have any feathers on the top of her head. Now, people think I'm kidding when I talk about some of these birds are more aggressive than others and it's always the females. I kid you not. This is a great big bird, but she has been anxious to get out of this cage for quite a while. Now, the cages in which they've been is either 110 feet or 85 feet, depending on where they've been at various stages. So it's a great big cage. It's as tall as 20 feet. And yet she'll fly along and she'll fly up and hit her head on the top of the cage and it just pulled the feathers out. So it's not an injury. Her brain's not falling out. She's not <laughs> suffering. It's just like a kid with scuffed up knees. There are some scabs there and it's not pretty, but she's fine. She may not be the picture you want to hang on the wall. <laughs> so when I walk around in front of the crowd with that bird, it may be at a slightly faster pace. <laughs> How many total eagles are you, are you tracking? Uh, right now, the Wildlife Center is only tracking three, but right now the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, I think, is up to about 87 or 88. It's the last figure I heard. And so a lot of that stuff is not you know, the, the results aren't being put on a website someplace. It's uh, University of West Virginia is collecting the data and they're just putting it on spreadsheets. But uh, with the three birds we have uh, rehabilitated and released, and particularly the one we released in 2011, uh, it has done more to prove the validity of wildlife rehabilitation than any other eagle ever cared for in captivity. The biologists that, that deal with these birds of prey have often said a bird raised in captivity cannot survive in the wild. They just fly off and die and it's just feel good and it's a waste of time. Well, I'm here to tell you that bird proved them way wrong. And uh, we are real happy about that. She's been doing all the right stuff. And now uh, she got in trouble. She got hit by a car because she was eating a deer carcass over on Northern Neck. That's one of the threats they face. 
Nobody found her because of the transmitter. They picked her up because she was standing beside the road with a broken wing. We brought her in, fixed her up, turned her loose again. That transmitter picked right up, and she stayed out of the road since learning that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to dive right in here. Let's get into the first bird. Now, just so you will know, uh, I'm going to need to probably move this, this end of the line back just a bit. I'm going to release the bird from right about here someplace and try not to fall over my podium. I'm going to throw the bird that way. And it may or may not go that way. <laughs> Once it leaves my hands, it's a wild bird. Ain't my problem anymore. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll do our best. And as long as it doesn't go down there in the bushes, in which case it's the refuge's bird, they've got to go in there and get it. <laughs> All right, and let me acknowledge before we get started, uh, Raina Krasner, my colleague from the Wildlife Center. <laughs> Raina is one of our outreach educators, and for those of you who are not yet cult members, uh, we have a very, very active online community through our Facebook page, a live discussion that runs all day long on our website. Uh, Raina is one of the people you'll encounter there, or if you have uh, an interest in Wildlife Center coming out to do programs at your school or civic group, she's the person you need to call, or her boss, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, and Linda Vetter, right behind her. Uh, yeah. Linda's uh, volunteer at the Wildlife Center. I know a lot, a lot of other folks are connected with us. The reason I'm acknowledging Linda is uh, with the birds this big, and especially since we've got to remove a transmitter, I need an extra set of hands today. Now, you will, um, in fact, pull those gloves out of there. Let me have those gloves real quick. Oh, God. <laughs> Just treat me that way. There we go. All right. Okay. Now I want to show you. I I will be wearing when I reach into that cage. And those eagle feet that are the size of my hand, reach back for me. They have 500 pounds of pressure per square inch. And I can tell you, uh, I've got scars in all sorts of places based on that. Some of them I have to know you a lot better to show you. But uh, these are double gloves specifically designed for eagles. So the, this is a soft glove that I can grip with. This up, oh, upper part here that. is in case I miss and the eagle decides to rip me. Now, once I get the bird out and under control, I'm going to take the gloves off. Now, that's not macho bravado or any other stupid self-defeating stuff. I can be that, but that's not what I'm doing this for. When I get the gloves off, once we get their head and feet under control, barehanded, I can control the bird much, much more effectively. So either I will get hurt, hopefully, and the eagle won't get hurt. And uh, we've never hurt an eagle on a release, but I've had more than one eagle hurt me on a release, and I just have to hear that as a rumor rather than witness it as a spectator. All right, here we go. Kelly, ready to face the live? All right. Got some nurses here. I said uh yeah, and this is the one with the transmitter. This is I get the little girl back. Is this back. the one we have to take it off of? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to need you all to step back, please. Come closer here. Let's see back, okay? Let's see back. Come over here. Back. Way back. Sit down. Yeah. Got to get back. Kind Come of over here. Yeah. Get back over this way. Come all the way over here. <laughs> yeah, right here yeah. is perfect. Now, this is the bird step we're going to have to throw the transmitter yeah. off. Sorry. <laughs> Look at those white. Huh? Beauty. 
And I just need to confirm the, the transmitter number. Wait. Alright, let's I guess I'll go grab that Hey, you can <laughs> Is that your brother? Female. What's his name? What? Tell him to stay back. Okay. Don't go over there. Stay right here. <laughs> it's expensive. I just want to go back to my Where's your chair? Okay, well, you can't go now because the eagle's out and it could hurt you. That's a baby eagle, too. I'll tell you when you can go, okay? Don't go yet. Do you need her to move? No, no. She's my property, yeah. so I can. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> we're we're family. Here you go. I don't know. That. I know. Thank you. That 15 pounds of that eagle. That eagle is the same. Yep. Yep. Guys, if you want, I don't know. Just gonna walk around. Okay. Just gonna walk around. It's 15 pounds. Big. Right. Yeah, but is he 15 pounds? <laughs> What's your brother's name? You need to back. Back out. Go back. You're gonna get hurt. Back it. Back it up. Back it up. Back up all the way. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. Yeah. Back up. And I'll walk around. Okay. Now I'm gonna. In fact, let me start down here, and I'll just do the circle. This is a solar-powered, cellular-based transmitter that collects information every 15 minutes, strapped to the back of the bird. It has a little harness made of Teflon ribbon that holds it right in place, soft pad, so that it doesn't hurt the bird. On the, the transmitter sits outside the feathers, but the little soft ribbons work their way under the feathers, so completely protected, doesn't catch up, doesn't snag anything, and the solar panel on the back of this charges the batteries. Now, they're guaranteed to last for two years, but the one we ha already have in the field has been actively sending signals every 48 hours for more than three years. And with this type of technology and with the information we get, we're able to learn more about the movement of these birds, about the habitat they utilize, and how best to protect them. Hold your head up. The mail. Also, I have one, one little question. We have three. Are you going to announce which number they are? Uh, is there a way to do that? Yeah, yeah this is 154. That's 154. All right. Thanks, man. Now, the moment we're waiting for. For which we are waiting. Addition up, which I will not put. All right. Are you ready? All right, on the count of three. Do a video. One, two, three. Yeah. I'll never get tired of that. Well, that's what, that was just like it's supposed to be. That's exactly what we want. The bird took off. And with these birds, it's going to be a little harder to see the, the sweet spot in the release. But uh, with a lot of the animals that we release, and these guys have been in a cage since four yesterday, so they're just happy to be out and stretch the wings. They're not flying as strongly immediately as they will in another five minutes, simply because they've been sitting there. It's like sitting at, at a chair for 18 hours and getting up and trying to sprint. Uh, it takes a while, even at their young age, to get things moving. But uh, with, with these birds, as they fly away like that, that bird flew far enough, strong enough, straight enough, so that we know our job is done with that bird.
Child. Yeah. All right. Now, the next two birds that we will be releasing are the two birds that came from right here. So these are Chinkatee birds, and uh, we're glad to be bringing them home. And so we're going to dive right back in and keep this moving. It's not getting any cooler out here. You're so short All right. To leave. So she's telling you. For those of you keeping track, we're uh, For those of you keeping track, the number on this next bird is 650. 650. You can go on their website. And you'd be able to go to our website and get the whole story on these birds. But these are the birds that came from the campground right over here. All right. Can you put sunscreen on your hair? Oh, yay. Why are you crying? You want me to get you one of those? Oh, it is? They do crush it. They're known for their crazy talents. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet they charge them extra at the manager place to them. All right, let's step out here. One up here. That bird is ready. One on either side. Put her head on. Put her head on. Put her head on. Let's hope this one goes as well as the last one. All right, ready? Okay, keep your head down. Ready. Ready. Okay. Ready. 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 <laughs> a lot of times when we release birds like that, now that one had been struggling a little bit in my arms, and so he's kind of winded, a little stressed. Not a very big bird, but like that one when he flew off out of here was not as strong as the one that went out first, and that that doesn't mean anything. It's just that particular bird. Now, he'll probably go around there and sit in those pine trees someplace for 10 or 15 minutes, catch his breath, orient himself. But when he takes off the next time, he'll go out of there like a rocket. And that's real normal. So circling around, the wind picked up just a little bit. He turned into the wind, which helped him get elevation, but it also slowed him down. And just, again, having been in that cave for 18 hours, it will take him a while to get loosen up and get ready to go. Okay. Now we got one more to go. We'll get him in just a second. Somebody asked me as I was going around, for those of you that didn't hear earlier, uh, is there a problem with lead shot and lead sinkers and fishing tackle and that sort of thing where eagles are concerned? The answer is not so much with the fishing tackle, although it's some some bit of a problem. That's more of an issue with birds like loons and, and herons and fishing birds. With eagles, the issue is lead shot used by hunters. Now, I grew up hunting, I'm a gun collector, I'm a shooting instructor, and so I am the last person in the world to say anything that is anti-gun. However, I have not fired a lead bullet hunting in 12 years now. Because we have found that, particularly here on the eastern shore where deer hunting is done with shotguns mostly, a single double odd buck pellet, which is smaller than the size of the average green pea, if that's ingested by an eagle, it'll kill him in 72 hours. 
and we have had as many as 60% of our eagles coming in with lead poisoning as their primary or secondary cause of admission to the hospital. Now this is not a new problem. This problem has gone on for a thousand years since we've been using guns and lead to hunt. What's new is we have the capacity to test for it very quickly. So we've got a little machine that sits on the counter of the lab in our hospital, and in 90 seconds, with a single drop of blood, we can tell how much lead is in the blood level, the blood level of the lead in that bird's blood, and we can take action. But right now, we're trying to educate hunters. They, I mean, everybody said, well, why don't they outlaw it? And indeed, one group decided they were going to introduce legislation to outlaw all lead bullets. And won't that be a good thing? Well, when the cops show up at your house to get the burglar with, and they're carrying sharp sticks, and they reconsider that. And, you know, our, our military throwing rocks at the terrorists will probably not work. Lead, it, only about 2% of the lead used in ammunition is used by hunters. The rest is used by army, law enforcement, target shooters, competitors, and just sports shooters or personal defense shooters. So when people look for easy answers, if it were that easy, we'd have answered it. But we're working to bring science to the discussion, reason to the discussion, and every single one of our patients, of the 3,000 animals we treat every year, provides us with environmental information that helps us inform policymakers about laws, regulations, and guidelines that are needed. So we're much more than the place that fixes broken animals. We do that, but that's the beginning of our work, not the end of our work. Okay, now we've got one more bird. Uh, this bird is a large female. She's also from the nest here, and this is the bird with no feathers on the top of her head. This is the bird, probably of the ones we have today, most likely to try really, really hard to hurt me. <laughs> so, uh, if, if you ask me a question and I'm a little distracted, you'll get over it. So, <laughs> uh, but before I dive in here, and before we're done, let me say two things. One is, if that pile of propaganda is not picked up over there, is there are there any brochures or is it all gone? Yeah, they're on the table, too. So oh, it's, okay. So, uh, if, if there's any there, get some. If there's not, sorry about that. Uh, the other thing is that we... As, as part of our, uh, oh, there's a table over there, I see it now. So there's some material on the table, a little information about the Wildlife Center. One of our traditions is we also bring cookies. And uh, it may be grab and growl, because I don't think we anticipated 200 people showing up, but it is what it is. Uh, before we bring this bird out, we will be hanging around. If you'd like to hang out, chat with us, talk about the birds, talk about wildlife, whatever. Please, please feel free to do so. We're going to be here. We're here for you, and uh, we're going to get this last bird out. Okay, and away we go. Oh, they told me like this bird was bald. <laughs> bird I said his bald headed you can see it's just her the top of her scalp it's just it looks like a little kid's skinned up meat and that's all more serious it is. Yeah. Not a crack. What number is he? Uh, I'll have to check. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Oh, you got a cute face, no more. Thanks. How do you like the birds? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's not bad. <laughs> All right. One more time. Yeah, she can be okay. uh -oh. Thank you. All right. Last and not least. Okay. What's the number? What's the number on this? 49. 649. 649. 649. Okay. Now I'm going to wait for that little breeze to slow down just a bit. That will push her off to the side. Now, see how she's hanging her head there? She thinks she's just terrible. <laughs> yeah, but that's about the time she'll reach right up and try to rip my nose off. Because <laughs> ordinarily, when we're holding her, and I'm going to wait for this breeze, when we're holding her, we have something done to her she doesn't like. Okay, it's starting to slap. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh.